science is never uh, kind of uh, mundane. It's always, it's, it's highs and lows, mostly lows. Uh, here we had a few big highs. Uh, but certainly it's, it's something that I never, to this extent, experienced in my life, even though I was in research for a while. People thought they had this virus nailed, but uh, they didn't. Well, it's like in any battle, know your enemy. So know the virus, know its detail, know how it's transmitted, know how it's changing, know the virus. We start very early. By the 30th of December, we, we noticed with some of our colleagues from Oxford, they were tweeting that uh, an unknown uh, pneumonia case had begun to happen in Wuhan. And I remember the day, it was the 11th of January. I'm sitting busy at my computer and Professor Dolavera walks in. He walks in and he says, have you seen this? It's on Twitter. I said, what are you talking about? He says, the viral sequence is on Twitter. It's probably a classical moment. So not only we saw the genome on Twitter, but what we did is to download the DNA sequence and start analyzing. We couldn't just let this epidemic happen to us we had to gear up. We put a lot of the difference uh, uh, on a side. The scientists tend to be very competitive. If we can help each other, we can advance science very quick. And when SARS-CoV-2 hits, we're able to pivot and use our facilities, especially our facilities that have high containment, uh, to work with the SARS-CoV-2 virus and try to understand it better. We started working with the, with the coronavirus around June. So part of my project would be to isolate the virus from infected individuals. The virus is, of course, a moving target. In uh, October, we started to realize that this virus is moving and changing. And one of the uh, most dramatic changes happened here in South Africa when this virus mutated and became what's known as the beta variant. We received it from Prof. Uh, Tulio, who does genomic surveillance, and he got the sample from the Eastern Cape province. <laughs> Within a week of receiving the samples, we saw a very unusual cluster, which again, I walk to the office of my good friend and colleague, Salim Abidou Karim, and I show him how unusual was that sequence. And when we went through the variant, we realized that this variant may be able to escape immunity. That was so destroying. Sandile was driving it, you know, he was ready to leave his family and stay here with me uh, over Christmas. It took us about three weeks and we couldn't do it. It was very difficult. It didn't grow so at all, in fact, at the beginning in monkey cells, which is usually how this, this virus is, is, is grown and isolated. So we had to figure out another way. So in that case, uh, you have to make some guesses. And of course, it's very dramatic when your guess turns out to be right. We figured out with the beta variant, we had to use a human cell line. And that's what we did. We found a human cell line that worked. And then we use that cell line to actually infect the monkey cells and be able to make enough of the virus so we can study it. Uh, it was, <laughs> we were very excited. As a researcher, there is no better feeling than to know that you are moving forward in the right direction. And we were the first ones to actually isolate the live beta variant. And our isolate of it is what's used around the world to study this virus. If my scientific team in the lab have took a holiday on early December, we would probably not have detected the variant so quick. Yeah, so the worldwide reaction, we were believed. We didn't um, uh, keep this knowledge to ourselves. As soon as we could, even before we were ready, we start to put this thing out. What we want to make sure is that our results can translate into public health interventions. And since then, there's a whole field that got established uh, looking at these variants and understanding how, what it is they do. People that were infected with the beta variant, 
they were protected from the earlier variants as their immunity was much stronger. And those were good findings and we we're very happy about it. From a scientific point of view, none of our advisories were challenged. Government wanted to hear what the scientists had to say. It is what South Africa has done very well. As a scientist, it's very important to see that your results have an impact that can save lives. And to be honest, that's what motivates us to keep working with the most dangerous pathogens that, that is known in the world. Definitely in the COVID research, have put my foot forward and did something which I think is good, really good.